In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an embeddable form in MailChimp and integrate it with your website without using any plugins at all. Just simple HTML, you just copy and paste, nothing scary, and I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass in the WP Learning Lab. We will help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. And this is the post we're going to add the MailChimp sign up form to. This is just lorem ipsum text. We're going to insert the form somewhere in here. And all we have to do to make that happen is create a form inside MailChimp, get some code, and then paste it over into our blog post. And this can work anywhere where you can put HTML code. You don't have to know how to use HTML. You just have to know how to copy and paste. So if HTML scares you, don't worry about it. We just copy and paste. So let's first go into MailChimp. We're in the MailChimp dashboard right here. If you want to see a tutorial on setting up MailChimp from start to finish, I have a link to that in the card up above and the description down below where I walk through all the important things inside MailChimp to get your account running. So check that out if you want to see that. In this video, we're just going specifically into the signup forms. To make a signup form, we head over to Audience and then we click on Signup Forms. And there's a bunch of different types. There are, or there is the form builder, embeddable forms, subscriber pop-ups, contact forms, and form integrations. And the form builder builds much prettier forms, but it gives you a link where the form is hosted, which is on a separate page. If you want to embed the form right into our blog post, we have to use the embedded forms. But these two are related. And I'll show you what I mean. When you go to embedded forms, we have a preview on the right with a set of fields, email address, first name, last name, birthday, email format, and the subscribe button. These can't be changed here. We can choose to show only the required fields, which will reduce the form just to email and email format. You can turn the email format off by unchecking this box here. And we have just email address and subscribe. But if you want to show more fields, like the name field, because we want to get their first name, but maybe we don't want their birthday, how do we change those fields? In here, you can't. We actually have to go to the form builder. You can click this link right here. It takes us to the form builder. This is the same builder you get to if you go to sign up forms and then form builder. And then in here, we can make first name required. Let's move that up above email address. So first name is first, then email address. Last name we don't need. I'm not going to make that required. These are hidden fields, which won't be visible on the form. You can also just delete them if you want to. Just click on it, click on delete. Type delete in capitals here, and it'll be deleted. But uh, you can just leave it there because it's hidden. People won't be able to see it unless they actually view the source code, which is unlikely. Birthday is also not required, but I'm going to delete this one because rarely do I ask for birthdays. So now we have made the first name required. You have to check the required field box and then click save, and then that will be saved. And now that we have those two set as required, first name and email, we can go back into our form, our embeddable forms, and we'll see this form will now have changed to have first name required, and that's first, an email address. And we can choose to show only required fields, and then uncheck this box to not show email format, and now we have the form how we want it. I don't know why they do it this way. It doesn't seem very user-friendly, but that's the way it works. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. I don't have any interest group fields in here. So if I uncheck that, nothing changes. And the required field indicators are the red asterisks. We're going to keep those. And then we can enable GDPR. Let's click on this link here. Scroll down and click on here, GDPR fields editor. Enable GDPR fields. You can change the title, description, marketing preferences, and you can add more options and more text. You can change all this text whenever you want. And then make sure we save GDPR settings at the bottom. Go back to our signup form, embedded forms. And now GDPR is enabled. And we can see it. Let's go back to unchecking all these things. We can see it right here, marketing permissions, and that's the GDPR compliance right there. And they can check whether they want to receive email, direct mail, customize online advertising, or none of those. And that list of items we can define on that GDPR field builder that we saw a moment ago. And then once we have our form the way we want it, let's click in here, copy the code, go back to our post, click on edit post, 
And wherever we want this form to appear, we click on the plus block, search for HTML, and then we paste that in. Then click on update. And then click on view post when it's saved. And now we're gonna have our form right here. And we fill this out. We check one of those boxes or all of them or none of them. Click on subscribe. And I'm already subscribed to the list. Let's use a different email address. And subscribe with that one there. Now, if I go back to my audience dashboard, actually all contacts instead, we will see that this one was just added, this email address right here. And you might've noticed that I didn't choose an audience. What is an audience? Well, each signup form can lead to a different audience. So if this was, for example, a post about music, which is the category that it's currently in, then we could have an audience in MailChimp for all the people who signed up on pages about music. We could have a different audience for people who signed up on, on pages about photography. You could have a different sign up form for every category on your site. And that way you can segment people and you can speak to them about what they indicated that they liked. Because if they signed up on a music page, they probably like music more than photography. That might not be true, but it's likely. Either way, audiences are a way for you to split up your list. If you're using a free MailChimp account like I have here, you only get one audience. And so we didn't choose an audience for the sign up form. But if you're using a upgraded MailChimp account, you can choose which audience you want the form to connect to. Up here it says audience, WP Learning Lab, because we only get one. This is the name of the audience that I picked for my account. And so you would have a drop down here or somewhere else where you can choose other audiences. And then you can have signup forms go specifically to those audiences when they sign up. And in another tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to connect a form to Elementor. So you can use Elementor forms to add people to MailChimp. They're much easier to customize. They look a lot better than this form right here, even though it's not the worst, but it's also not the best. Either way, I'm gonna show you how to do this in Elementor in a different video, because I know that's gonna be in demand. Next up, you should check out the MailChimp playlist right here, where I show you how to do all kinds of things with MailChimp. Almost everything you need for online marketing is in that playlist if you're using MailChimp. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from the WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.